Welcome back to the Books and Music Review Show. And there's your disclaimer. We'll leave that on for a couple of seconds. And today we have a guest named Joan. And she's going to show some fantastic, fabulous artwork, all different kinds. And maybe she'll give us some kind of information about the artwork. <coughs> or how to do it. So, welcome to the Books and Music Review Show. You can contact us at books.musicreview. And there's the beginning of some of the artwork. I'm going to take those words off for you. There you go. Okay, so that's the first one. You know what? I should have let you uh, say hello to the audience and um, greet them before I did that. So let's see if I can go back and... Hold on one second. Okay, there's Joan. Joan. Greetings. Most people pull out the popcorn when the show begins, and I'm going to advise you to put the popcorn away because this is a little bit of a wild ride. You just saw a picture of, of a rocket ship, and that's one of many things I did while I was in school when I was a young lady uh, because this rocket ship's going to go blasting up in the air we don't want you getting seasick as you try to maneuver your popcorn and watch TV. So, why don't we begin with the first picture. This was Cape Canaveral. It was in the parade section of the newspaper. And I took a photograph and I did my own little determination of what I saw through my eyes. And here we go, a blasting off, boom, into the air. And it is gone. So what happened was, every time I could get a good, interesting photograph, I would try to copy it. I don't know if this was a photograph of something, but I thought it was interesting, the clouds, the trees, the little island in the ocean, and the little tiny thing hiding amongst the trees on the ocean. I said, wow, somebody already built me my house. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wait a minute, put that back a minute. Uh-oh. What happened? So I was just wondering, you said you didn't know if that was a photograph or what. So how did you, um, you drew that with pencil first or you just Folded painted? in very lightly with pencil and then got very splashy with the color, watercolors. So it's a watercolor. So where did you get that idea though? If it wasn't a photograph or, or? It was a photograph and I might made my own interpretation of what was in there. Maybe ah. the island was actually off to the side, but I scented it and. That's cool. Gave it my own opinion, I will say. That I was like my that. opinion. So what do we got but next? Anyway, let's do away with that. Then I always liked monotones. So I took the purples, the blues, and I just imagined mountains. This wasn't of anything. If it is, is from a photograph, then I'm doing it from memory. But I took, took this, and I decided to work with the purples and the blues and just make it kind of a monotone color of mountains. I don't know where they came from, but... It's nice no, to wait, dream about. I was going to ask you a question about that one that you just oh, made. Oh, yes. Let's, let's put it back. Okay, I love it that you put your name on the painting. I'll tell you why. Because um, quite a long time ago, I was in an art class. And I guess it depends on where you go and what you're doing. There are some artists, uh, art instructors, who insist that you do not have your name on the painting. And I'm thinking, you know what? You put all that work into it. Why shouldn't your name be on the painting? What do you think about that? Did anybody ever tell you when you were taking art classes whether you should name them or not? We were always told to put our identification in our pictures. Ah. And I think it's strange that a teacher would tell you not to, and I wonder if they would just like to claim it for their own, because there were <laughs> things that I had projects of. Yeah. I put it in a booklet, and I never put my name on every single page. And you know what? <laughs> those projects were kept, and those teachers brought the artwork home, and at the end of the year, they thanked me for it. Wow. You know, when you hand in a project, it's no longer your artwork, so. Ouch, there we go again. Here's your free artwork. I love that one. That's my this favorite. This is very, very subliminal blue. almost. It's, as a yeah. matter of fact, folks, it's upside down. <laughs> but that's, that's the sign of good artwork, is if it's upside down or right side up or sideways. Wait, turn that back again. <laughs> <laughs> that I is see mountains the, now. Oh, okay, you, well, you're going through the pictures very, very quickly. I want to go a little bit slower. Um, move it over to the side a little bit. Pull it in a little bit. Whoops. No, the other way. That's good. Okay, so I like it this way, so it's upside down, right? It's a person hanging down from a tree and looking at it <laughs> at the right angle, but they're upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this view of it, and I don't know why, 
but it's just my favorite. Okay, so turn it the way it should be. You probably like the color turquoise because that's what it reminds me of. Turn it, reminds it the me way of turquoise. I do. I love Oops. the colors, teal and turquoise. Mm -hmm. See, this uh, this reminds me of something different. Hmm. Very nice. Uh, when did you do this painting? And why? Oh, so long ago. This had to be back in the 60s when I was still in school or maybe this just out of school. This is a 60s school. painting? Oh, See, we're talking, we're talking 50 years or more ago here. You know what? Name on the front, date on the back. <laughs> and I like that, too. And yeah, it's not so on cool. there. This is one thing I didn't... Is that from your imagination or what? That was from my imagination as was this feather. Uh-huh. The feather. I just felt like white and blue and almost like a Mediterranean, but and a, a lighter. And it almost kind of purplish, too. And that dark feather, yeah. And then I said, you know, don't, e don't even fill the feather in because there's things in the background that I really, really like. It kind of reminds me, I know it. this is ridiculous, but it kind of reminds me of like palm trees, like a feather made out of palm okay. trees. Okay, okay. Well, it, cool. it's supposed to be a quill type of a yeah. pen. Mm -hmm. And as you could see by this little corner here, I didn't plan quite well because <laughs> that's missing. When so did I'd, you do this one? I didn't get that. Oh, this is about the same time as the other. And I what guess is this? This is also watercolor? It's watercolor, yes, but it's very, very thick watercolor. Most people okay. work in watercolor. You can actually see the water mm -hmm. kind of coming through, and I didn't do that. I Thick, thick paint. Mm -hmm. Terrible. And wow. Any medium is suitable. So I used to work in pencil. This is a pencil where I rubbed out the background, mm -hmm. and I gave it a little bit of a dark background, showing the church at night. You could see the doors are all lit up, and that's my interpretation of a very bare tree with snow on top of the branches. I don't know if they can tell that, but mm -hmm. it was a winter day, and the church was lit, and, 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 and. I did this when my sister and I went to the World's Fair, mm -hmm. and I'm sure I took a, oh, that, that's sticking up in the air. The World's Fair is taking off on us. <laughs> this was called the Eunice Fair. I remember the And we, the we went to see this, and it was right out there in front of everything. You couldn't avoid it. You went to the World's Fair. This is what you saw, and I remember getting the postcards. Back then, folks, postcards were five cents each and three for a dime. Now you're lucky if you could get them now for a dollar Now, before you pull each. that off, you, you should yes. not pull them off till I ask my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, it's your show. Okay. You were in so, charge. I agree no, with well, you. Well, if you don't mind. You, no, no, okay not at all. Questions? Not at all. Okay, so you painted this. Mm -hmm. Were you at the Unisphere when you painted this? No, um, no. This is taken it. from a postcard later. And this is actually a, pen, a pencil oh, okay. drawing, believe it or not. Okay. It's so when's the last time you went to the Unisphere? Oh, I haven't seen it in years. I've seen it shown on TV because they were talking about World's Fairs, affairs, uh -huh. and part of it was they showed a Unisphere. And I said, I remember that. I drew that. And I did it as a project for school. I was always doing stuff, I like stuff for school. You know what? You, this would be, you, you have an assignment. You should do this in watercolor. <laughs> oh, isn't That'd she funny? That is so cool. That is beautiful. Okay, next. All righty, next. Or if you'd rather say next, you can take them as you want to. No, that's okay. I like the fact that you found that so interesting that we talked about the World's Fair for a while because, like I said, back in those days, we didn't drive. We went to the World's Fair by train. <laughs> and going from Brooklyn to Queens was wow. quite a task. And I know my parents wanted no part of it. I think my father did bring us the first so time. So what did you do when you got to the World's Fair? Oh, there were so many things to look at, futuristic projects. I want to projects. know what your favorite was. I think I liked the futuristic projects because they were telling us how much the world was going to progress. And what's funny is sometimes some things they got right, but some things actually looked awkward the way they presented it because what they came out with many, many years later was something very trim, slim line, very like one fifth of the size <laughs> that they actually showed us, but you have to remember that was the dark ages when there was no cell phones, no computers. Uh -huh. Banks, when they had computers, took up a whole room with all the stuff, and now so, you can get one small, one tenth of this table and put everything that so was in that the bank years ago. So put the Unisphere back on. Um, I have a question about that now. Sure. That was a sphere. It was some kind of, um, I guess, an art uh, thing. You could you couldn't go inside that, right? It was just like a like an art exhibit kind of. It was an art exhibit you saw through windows that you were on this moving accelerator belt, and you just went along. So you didn't even have time to answer questions. As a matter of fact, if there was wait a minute, to you read, mean this ride was inside the Unisphere? 
this no 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 this was inside the world's fair because the oh, hemisphere okay, came okay. first to show you here you are this uh-huh. is the world's fair here's mm-hmm. your global unity and all this other stuff mm-hmm. but then they had all these mini projects inside but some of the projects were as big as this building now because that's you know this fear is still there right oh yes and that's why they had it on tv recently and now the fountain is there was the fountain there when the world's fair was you know, there? i don't even remember the fountain shame on me it's a beautiful beautiful wow. fountain and, and you then think the i would like it i'm a pisces <laughs> shame on me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now this one, I like this. Is that pencil or pen? This is pen and ink, and it was ah. called Pen and Ink Magazine. And it was one of these things that in my year there, my first year there, the teacher said, well, I like your artwork a lot, and you're always volunteering. Why don't we put you on the cover? And there uh-huh. I am, tiny, tiny, tiny Joan Jacobuski. But she liked the work, and she said it looked so good, and she liked the birds going up through the air. But in the end, this was folded as a cover. Wow. Oh, that is beautiful. I like this. So uh, this is what it looked like. Uh, and then you, you turn know? it over, and there was the continuation. So Wait a minute. I think I've seen that magazine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm wrecking your <laughs> microphone oh, equipment. I think I I've apologize. seen that magazine, though. Where was that available? That was in William H. Ink. Maxwell Vocational High School. That's where I went to I, school. Wow. On. Sorry about that. Pennsylvania okay. Avenue and Liberty Avenue in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. When it wasn't so bad, then it became a war zone. And now it's no, now it's actually a big development. It's getting better now, Avenue. and William H. Maxwell Vocational High School no longer exists. I, don't th- I was going to say that's not. There. I think that whole property because they had a, a splendiferific. Can you show us that one that's behind there? Because we're seeing two letters together, two different wordings. Put that one in front, the big one. Put that in front. Can you pull that out and put it in front of the you stationery? You know what? One? You're right. So I'm seeing, yeah, let me see the big one first. Okay. This ah. was another project. This was something Keep for New something York's. in school where they wanted us to get the message out for people to stop trashing on our wonderful borough. Was this I'm not sure they did idea? this in all the five boroughs, but was it was Brooklyn, and they wanted us to come up with some kind of a thing about keep New York clean. So I said keep New York spotlessly clean. <laughs> and I think this little area here threw them off because uh-huh. it was too much black and white and it almost looked like a puzzle so it didn't get picked but, but you, you know, know what? what but that's that was my the, project i like that that's the good part of it i mean that's the part that really draws your eye yeah well this wasn't bad here the ly but this yeah blending into the i like that it looks like a puzzle it, it, it just struck them wrong joan you she did the was. wrong thing ah. put it away add it to your portfolio and bring it out in the future for lp well you know um it's not really wrong because you're the artist and and that's what i saw get to say what what's mm-hmm. right with it and that's why i have those cool. little things now, coming now out let's see the shine. smaller one you can pull that aside and let's see the smaller one Get over there, New York. Ah. Oh, wait, you have another one big oh, in the back. Pull yep, the big that's one right. out, and we'll see Joan that. Does not we'll eventually get to this small one. Joan does not know how to set up her <laughs> stuff. And they asked me to put this in the, what they call the GO room. That was one of the rooms where they General sold. General organization. Yep, they sold our all kinds of stuff, including sports equipment. So. Okay, so tell me, what did you sell in the GO? Because that bring, brings back memories. I, I actually bought a lot of stuff there, a lot of supplies. Yeah. I didn't actually sell anything there. Now, uh, But they wanted my signage, so what, the signage what? made it in the store. And, and Joan, get out. Thank uh-huh. you for the sign, get out. What no, was I'm the name of that uh, store? This is another pen and ink. I used no, to work no. in India ink. The name of the school. The school, again, was William H. Maxwell Vocational High School. So that sounds like a really serious school. So uh, silly question, but I'm going to ask it just because this is the Books and Music show and we can ask any questions. Did they sell purple grape charms lollipops in the geo room? You know, I don't remember the candy. I really don't. <laughs> I remember it being all school supplies. I think the candy, because of the vendors, came in later. Uh huh. Because vendors realized they could give you forty to sixty percent, and the rest of the percentage was clear to them. They had wow. nothing they had to answer for, and you had to keep the records and everything. So, wow. it didn't come early. It, it, it's one of the things that evolved in school because they could make so much more money, mm-hmm. and the vendors were happy too. They were making money; they weren't even there. <laughs> So, so did you ever work in the geo? No, I never did. I didn't either. But I, I was a good customer. <laughs> I asked you about the lollipops for a reason because you were bringing back memories when you said geo. Mm-hmm. I had gone from a very, very strict Catholic high school. 
Wow. In the middle of sophomore year <laughs> to a very, very, um, I don't know what the word is, uh, comfortable, easygoing high school. Mm hmm as far as um, dressing and whatever they did. You know, we went from like, you had to wear this and that, and you get to that school. And I was almost in shock because I walked into the classroom for the first time in the middle of the year. And can you imagine like in a strict high school, you just, you know, do what they tell you, don't do anything that they haven't told you True. to do, et cetera, et cetera, wear perfect uniforms. So I walk in the first day to, I don't know, if I think it was a science class. And I go into this room, and there's like 20 or 30 kids, students, teenagers, and like seven or eight of them are sitting there sucking on purple lollipops. And if that was Catholic school, it was purple <laughs> lollipops with no sugar. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's like lollipops in school? Are you kidding? I don't know if you remember that far back. We had no sugar free. It was either sugar no, or nothing. No, no sugar free. <laughs> Actually, you know what we did have in, I would say, in the 50, in the middle 50s or whatever, we had no sugar, we had sugar free, but they didn't advertise it as that. Remember they had no cal soda? Hmm. And then they okay. had um, a few other things, a no cal soda, and they didn't say, you know, it was a diet soda or anything, it was just no cal. It was a secret. <laughs> yeah, right? So, um, I like this, sports equipment. So this was, did you make this for the GEO or not? Yeah, I made everything. No charge, ah, never, no never charge. got paid, but I got good grades, so that made up for it. Good grades Wait, more they did all money. this in your high school? Well, I'll tell you the they truth. They did I'm archery and tennis and fishing? I'm thinking back, and believe it or not, I went to George Gershwin Junior High, and I think that's where this is from. So wow, just boating and football and hunting. Hunting? This was 1965. I was in junior <gasps> high school. Shame on me. Wow. Junior high school. I think that's Sorry amazing that. that they had a hunting in high school. Yeah. No, that junior high, George Gershwin, once PS1, JHS 166. And that was in Brooklyn, right? Yep. Yep, that mm -hmm. was in Brooklyn. Okay, so what's the next one? We do have plenty of time. We have 11, hey, like about 12 more minutes. Um, okay, stationary. A picture, stories. it's so much when you're looking at a sign, because some people are drawn by pictures. And that's why I couldn't wait to show wow. this one. Wow. And it says toys, and there's a little <laughs> teddy bear. It says art supplies, and I there's like the, the little, little book, nib with the paper. And you've got the book on the side there. And there's books, and so. Anyway, that I, was my I, artwork. How do you get the words to fit on there just so precisely? Everybody that has a brain in their head uses a ruler <laughs> and a pencil, and they just erase later. There were lines oh. under there. Otherwise, they would not be so straight. The okay. other thing is a light box. You could put the lines behind the paper on the light box and never have to do any pencil lines because oak oh, tag, really? oh. yeah, oak tag, if you erase the shiny side, it will show that you erased something. Oh. That's interesting. Wait a minute. What do you mean if you erase this? If you side? erase on oak tag and it's on the shiny side, you will have those erasure marks show up because yeah. it takes away the shine. Yeah. You're erasing, yes, your pencil lines. You're uh -huh. also erasing the sheen that's on top of that oak tag paper. Ah. Yeah. Okay. I found that out the hard way. What is that? that? This sign here, what did you do that on? This is on plain, it's, it's like a Bristol paper. It's okay. not Bristol board. There's Bristol board, and then there's Bristol Let me Bristol see the paper. one all the way in the back, the big one. This pull one? The, no, pull the big one out. Yeah. Which pull big it. one? The one you have in your hand. This one? The one, yeah, that one. Tell me this about one. that one. Yeah. I just fooled around with triangles. I had the triangle shape, and I was just doing all kinds of angles. And I think the only... What do you... Right angle is that one right there. I think all the rest are obtuse or whatever they used to call them. Ah. But I used to love to fool around with geometrics. What you know, do you... Shoving one angle inside uh -huh. of another angle. And then to make it more complicated, you can see some of the one in the background with the points. Right. I used to love to dabble in pointillism. Uh -huh. And why was that, Joan? Because pointillism took hours to fill in because you're right. doing it dot by dot mm -hmm. by dot. And when my friends saw me working so slowly on these other, they're in the background, you'll see them soon. What did you do this one on? This one was also done on that Bristol board. You can actually tell by the- Now, before you take that away, so uh, what do you know about triangles? Nothing much. I forgot most of my geometry. Do you know about triangles and building and construction? I know they use the triangle a lot. Why? I have no idea. I'm going to tell you. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to tell you only for one reason, because there used to be a show on that I absolutely loved. It was a kiddie show. 
I guess it was made for kids, but I always watched it. Well, I had kids, but I love the read. It was called Reading. Was it Reading Rainbow? Do you remember a show on uh, Channel 13? It was where they would read a book. Reading Rainbow sounds nice. I like that. I forget what the name it is. Something to do with reading. And mm. they would read a book. And one day, they were reading this book about construction. And they told me a trivial fact that I didn't know. And they said in construction, whatever you are building, whatever, whether it's a building, a wall, or a chair, or anything at all, if you don't have the triangle, the thing will fall apart. So that's mm. kind of interesting. It's like everything that we have has triangles. And the triangle is what makes the whatever it is you're building strong. And then there was the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. I had that to throw was that bad. in. I started coughing. No, that was good. I was. Go ahead, go. Next. The same idea, but without ah. so many triangles to show you the different colors running into one another. Uh-huh. I mean, if you really look closely, you can see. And you did not do this in math class. You did this in art class. I actually did these at home. I didn't have time in art class. Oh, okay. I would have spent the whole weekend locked up in the school if I had to do this <laughs> one especially <laughs> and get it done because it takes hours and hours at dot, 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 dot. I'm surprised I'm not Wait a minute. This now. one is done by dots? It's done by dots. You can see yeah, the little I tiny dots it. in there. Yeah. And they I kind like of blend them. into one another. And that's what I, I was like trying that. to do, get the colors intermingled. Very so you can nice. see it's one big happy family of triangles. <laughs> so but, um, when you were a kid and you went into school, what in the world made you interested in art? What attracted you to that? Believe it or not, I saw cartoons that were drawn, and I ah. said, those are funny. So not only do they make me laugh, but it's also considered artwork. I started copying cartoons. And my art teacher, the first time she caught me doing that, got very, very angry. I took a picture Look of- Look at the camera. Hey, Joan. Something funny. Hey. Go ahead. I took a cartoon of Khrushchev, and I copied that. Uh -huh. And it showed him profile like Alfred Hitchcock. And the, I wanted to stress the big tummy. Wow. And she just thought it was so great. She says, why are you copying pictures? Make your own artwork. And I think once I started getting into the geometric thing, I think they must have been very disappointed because I stopped people. I stopped drawing people. <laughs> and wow. I started getting into everything else under the sun. Mm -hmm. So with that, I think we should take these away so you could see some other real artwork. And here's one where I took a pen. And you can ah, see where it nice. has water stains. I did have a flood. That's really cool. In my home, and I ruined some of my artwork. Not on purpose. Maybe somebody else would like to have done that on purpose, but not uh -huh. me. But you can see the strength of the cross hatching and the wavy lines in the mountains. But anyway, it's ruined, so <laughs> I don't know if you want to comment about that. But it's. You know, we can do you can do cross hatching by computer now too. I know. What do you need me <laughs> for? I'm fired. No, but it's always nicer to get the real thing, you know. See, this was not computer. These were little circles come out, cut out of construction paper and dropped right in the center of one another. Are those done with a an instrument or by your? I actually cut it by hand on my own. So I really th Ooh, this is almost good. as bad as the pointillism. I like that. <laughs> But that's what I wanted to do at that time. You know, your your mind and your feelings go through certain stages of life. And this was the stage I was in that day. I, I did a whole bunch of these, cut out circles, matched them up, threw them down. And you can see the second one is something like it, but it's not in the middle. It's kind of spread around. I'm getting lots of inspiration. I have ideas for things I that I want to do. I like the combination of colors. You say black, yeah. gray, a dull blue, orange. But when you see them and you see the difference with the black gray and then the black gray with the splashes of orange it adds something so, so i'm seeing like a before snowman and after i'm seeing a snowman convention right with the little tiny heads and, the little and just think now you can do it with a machine you don't <laughs> have to do it by hand like no i, I like did. um i don't know and then machine there was the okay. one to show it's not prejudice i love all the colors that god created tutti frutti and I just threw a whole bunch of colors together. And that was construction paper back then. Now they have so many more colors that you could play with. Because, again, here we're going back about 35 or more years. Oh, gee. You know what? We have about 4 minutes and 18 seconds left. All right. So, oh. so we have a lot more to show. Um, no. I'll stop talking. You could do the talking. This is what I do now. Whoops. May I print your name in calligraphy? Uh, this is terrible. Ah. Anyway, Wait, I'll move that. I used so. to make up free 
people's names using calligraphy. Nice. And I would say, he has all the colors. What color? Point to the color you want your name to be in. Uh huh. And they were very, very happy with that. Wow. And now here's the last of it, folks. Crazy oil paintings I've done in my past. That you can see is just stuff I put together from household, cans, bottles, So you're whatever. watching Joan dabbling in art with Joan Maurizio. But then this is the one that makes a whole lot more sense. Oh, I like that. My yeah. sister went to Bermuda. And what did I get out of it? I got a postcard. <laughs> Very nice. And this is my interpretation of the postcard. And it had beautiful trees. It had the sun just setting way in the background. It had the water. It had the clouds in the sky. I may have even added a cloud or two because that's interpretation. You do your own thing. So I just want to say that I had fun. I'm really Every glad you I came to the show. Do you, is there some that we have not seen yet, or is this the last one? Do you have well, any more? Actually, I have something I, like I left one. on the table, and I don't know what this was Put for. it on. Let's see it. <laughs> this was a science thing, though. You can <laughs> tell because... M plus R equals H. Something plus something I have H. no idea what that formula was, but it was a formula for better ah. health going back to school. Music Folks, plus reading equals health. You Oh, I like that. Music the and formula reading for better health. Music you know, plus reading right, equals though. health. Music That's what it is. And <laughs> reading, if you're enjoying yourself, are so good for your health. So we're dabbling in art with Joan I like Maurizio. what you do. I was going to tell the folks that are watching, come up with, I don't think you can come up with yes, something better. Yes, whoever than that. has a formula, Music M plus R equals H, or if you know what that means, write to us. Mon not books. monsters and robotics, that's uh -huh. for sure. I liked yours. Music and reading. Is the but books that, and music that was a school show. project again, and the teacher loved it, and she gave it back to me. I was wow. happy. I got one of my artworks back. I usually did not get my artwork back. I can't tell you all the things I gave to the school, and I even used gold leaf. Uh -huh. Back then, gold leaf was not that expensive. I think gold in itself was $30 or less an ounce. Let's see the blue pictures you again. Could buy, you could buy. That'll look with the uh, gold leaf and putting put up it the in email. your paintings. Say that but again, you could buy gold, gold leaf that's for your paintings. I'm sorry. But that's very expensive, right? The gold what, leaf? Gold leaf, now, now if you use gold, gilded, they call it gilded. Ah. If you use that, it's very expensive. And you can tell the good from the bad because the gilded fake stuff will eventually turn green like some of my things did later on. So but tell me, what's, what's the most, we have a minute and 22 seconds, what's the most important thing about art, in your opinion? It shows your mood. It could be the mood you're in. A picture be, can look very, very scary or can look very, very beautiful, depending on the mood you're in. It's just like re reading something from Edgar Allan Poe. You know, you can say it gently, and it's still a mean poem that can scare the life out of you, and then you can read it in the mood he must have been in, because this was a guy that was using drugs when he did some of his work. And he would really scare people. People can interpret it one way or another. I mean, it has a message behind it that just gives you the meaning he had, and you have nothing to say about it. That's how he wrote it, and that's how it is. But you can take a person with a gentle voice that will read it, and it won't seem as bad or as scary. But if you put artwork to it, depending on your mood, it could be a very scary piece or not such a scary piece. Maybe dark and dank, but no monsters coming out of it. But you get the right artist in the right mood, and they can really scare you with the picture on it. Wow, Edgar Allan we have Pope 17 cover. seconds. I'm so glad you came to the show. I want to thank you for inviting me. It I was actually fun. had fun doing this, it was definitely and fun. I liked your input. Your input was excellent. You're a very sound mind person, very brilliant. Thank you. <laughs>